All right, good day, class. You are welcome to today's literature class. I am your host for today, your literature instructor. My name is Karine Solomon Olugola, and uh, I am here for our literature class to take us through this topic. We want to see your recommended poems. And today's class, we focus on your non-African poem, which is the Puli. The Puli, written by George Abbott. But before I continue, this e-learning platform is brought to us by Isaac Humanitarian Foundation. So back to class. We have the Puli. The Puli is one of your 12 recommended poems for WIAC Award and JAM examination. The Puli, written by George Abbott. Now look at this poem. The Puli is a non-African poem that shows, that shows one, the supremacy of God over man. It shows the supremacy of God over what? Man. That God is supreme over man. That God is what? The creator of what? Of man. It depicts what? God as the creator of what? Of man. That man is what? Is dependent on God. The poem shows the account of creation. It shows the account of what? Of creation of man. That is the central motive or theme of, it, of the poem. It is a non-African poem that shows the supremacy of God over man, how it depicts God as the, the creator of what? The universe and the creator of what? Of man as an instrument in his work, in his hand. But then, the poem shows the account of creation, how God created what? The world and created what? Man as what? A living eh, being. How God made man in his image to what? To occupy the world as what? A living eh, entity. But then, man was given different what? Gifts of life at creation. God implanted in man the needed or necessary gifts of what? Of life that we what? Make man's existence in the world meaningful and to what? To aid his what? His condition. So at creation, God gave man different what? Gifts of life. Meaning, God is depicted as having what? Supremacy over what? Over man. Then also, the point shows the predestination of, of man. Man is predestined by what? By God. Why? At creation, God made a say that what? Let us create man in our image. And then God gave man all the necessary or needed gifts of work of life. God gave man riches, God gave man wisdom, knowledge, wealth, and then when all these gifts have been implanted, implanted in what a man, God decided to withhold the last gift from man, which is what? Rest. The only gift that God did not give man at creation is what? Rest. Rest, which means the place of what? Eternity. The place of eternity. And God withholds this last gift, rest, from man, so that man can what? Can continue to enjoy what? His relationship, so that man can come back to him, to what? To seek the last gift, which is what? Which is rest. So the poem talks about uh, the supremacy of God over man. It shows the predestination of man by God, that what? Man has been predestined by God. How? God denied what man the last gift of life, but which can only be given if man can maintain what? Close relation with what? With him. The poem also shows what? 
man's dependence on what? On God. It shows man's dependence on what? On God. That all our efforts in this life is what? All our efforts, all our efforts in life are what? Are futile. They lose what? Nothing. If we don't have what? The last gift, which is what? Which is a rest. Also, the point portrays what? God as an infallible word creator. It shows God as an infallible word creator. Perfect creator. Why? It gives what? Account of the creation of what? Of man. How God made man and then how God puts in man all the necessary what? Qualities that will make what? Man's existence to be meaningful in life. And then how God is able to what? To know that man may what? May lose his interest in him if he is given the last word, gift of life. So God has seen what? The future. That if man should be given what? This last gift, which is the most important gift of life, man will be what? Forever lost. Man will be what? Will be lost forever. That is, God will what? Will lose man. And then man too will what? Will lose God. Why? Man will now continue to worship what? The gifts that God has given him. Man will what? Will continue to worship what? The nature instead of what? Of worshiping the creator of the nation, of the, of the nature. Then also, God will what? Will lose in that world. He will not be able to enjoy what? Man's relationship. Therefore, in the poem, said God made what? A state. A state that uh, if I give man this last gift, he will what? Be forever lost. Therefore, to bring man back to my bosom, to, for me to continue to enjoy man's relationship, let me withhold what? The last gift, which I cannot give to him whenever he comes back to me, seeking what? My attention. And then again, in the poem, the poet persona claims that uh, God withholds that rest. So as what to enjoy man's world relationship, that all the gifts of life that have been given to, to man, they can make man to what to lose uh, God's word attention or interest. Why? Man may not seek what God again, but then God now what added little sorrow to man's life, so that when in time of enjoyment, when in time of work of pleasure, when in the time of work of riches, man does not remember God. By the time sorrow comes in, man will retrace his steps back to what? Back to God. So it shows what God as a perfect word creator who has seen the future, who has known what man will become what in future. Hence, man is now what? Predestined to what? To enjoy all the gifts of life to have what? all the needed qualities of life, all the needed what? pleasure of life. But then, man should also what? experience what? sorrow. Man should also experience what? weariness at a point in his life. So that if that riches, that pleasure, that good life that man enjoys does not bring him back to God, by the time he experiences what weariness or sorrow, he will remember what his creator and then come back to him. So by the time man comes back to God to cushion the effect of that sorrow or weariness that he has what he is now experiencing, God cannot what, give him his last gift, which is what place of eternity. So suddenly the poem also includes what. God as the creator of a man. It shows what the importance of rest in man's life. No wonder man's life is what is restless. All our efforts in what in life is what is full of a of an hardship. We toil day and night. We toil here and there. There is no place of rest in human life. Why? That rest that we need as our last and most important gift has not been given to us except we can only maintain what? Close relation with God. That is when that last gift 
can what can be handed over to us. Also, the poem shows what the futility or the fruitlessness. It shows the futility or the fruitlessness of life outside what God. Man's life is incomplete outside God. No man achieves success outside God. Why? Our success is dependent on what on God. Our our activities are predestined what by God. The condition that man finds himself today is predestined by God. That pleasure that you experience, that merriment, that celebration, that good life that you have, you are being given right from what creation. Then that sorrow that you experience as well momentarily, it is predestined by God because God observed that a man can only remember him in the time of sorrow, which is in the poem, that if the riches I gave him do not bring him to my bosom, at least weariness will toss him back toward my breast. Meaning, in the time of enjoyment, man may not remember God. In the time of pleasure or celebration, we may forget what, who is called God. But by the time little sorrow comes in, you experience what? Little discomfort, you experience what? Unhappiness or sadness, practice. you will run back toward your creator for help. What is that? God is now what? Enjoying good relationship with you because of what your experience in life. What is that? Predestination of what? Of a man. Then lastly, the poem portrays what? The mutual relationship between what? Man and God. Yes, there is a mutual relationship between man and God. How? Man is what? Enjoying the presence, the comfort, the, the, the supreme power of his creator, God. Also, God is what? Enjoying the attention, the worship, the service of what? Of his instrument, which is what? His creator, man, as an instrument. So, it portrays the mutual relationship that exists between what? Man and the God. Can I say that uh, this poem has religious word undertone? It has religious word message. The language of the poem is religious in form. How? It shows the account of what? Of a creation. It shows relationship that exists between what? Man and God. So it has religious word undertone, message. So if you ask the exam, discuss the holy as a metaphysical word poem. Yes, it is a metaphysical word poem that word that shows the account of creation, that shows God as the creator of the universe and man as what as an instrument in his hand. It portrays God as what an infallible word creator who wants the word continue to enjoy the attention and the, the worship of what of men so as to give man his last gift of life which was denied at the time of creation that's all rest so these are the things these are the things that are portrayed in what in the text in the in the poem we have supremacy of God the predestination of work of man Man's dependence on what? Man's dependence on God. We have God as an infallible word creator. We have God as a creator of God of man. We have the importance of rest in man's life. We have the futility of life outside God. We have mutual relationship between God and what? And man. These are the thematic preoccupations for the poem. The last aspect under it is uh, the poetic devices. What are the poetic devices used by the poet to bring out the thematic uh, preoccupation? Of course, the first one is what? Diction. Diction. Diction is the first one. And on top of addition, we talk about uh, the choice of words or language style of the poem. If you look at the choice of words used by the poem, the choice of words, they, they are religious. 
we have religious language, yes. The word persona used what? Religious word, language. To do what? To defeat his religious message. And what is the religious message of the poet? That is, man should what? Maintain close relations with what? With God as his creator. Man should continue to maintain what? Man should be rightly connected to his source. As long as man wants to get the last gift of life, which is what? Rest. And rest there means what? The place of eternity. So that when man dies, man can what can rest in, in God's bosom. But that rest that you need, you can only get it if you are rightly connected to what? Your source, who is the supreme God. But anyone who does not maintain close relation with God, or you are not rightly connected with your source, you cannot get what the last gift is your rest. So God is holding your last gift. Other gifts you have been given at the time you are created. But this last one, you can only get it from God when you come back to Him, when you maintain good relation with Him, when you walk, you live upright life with Him. He can then what hand you the last gift of life, which is what a place of rest in his kingdom after what your your existence in this world world. So you can see that the point has religious what undertone, it has what religious message. No wonder the choice of words that the poet uses for what religious uh, message statement. So you have religious language being used. In the poem. Number two, we have a symbolism. The poem is symbolic. Symbolic. Yes, you can see the title. The title is symbolic. Why? It shows the struggle of man. The pulling. As man is pulling what? God. God is pulling what? Man. Man wants to what? Get from God. God too wants, wants to what? Get from what? From man. So it's a mutual what? Relationship. So it's it is, it is titled The Holy, which is a, the symbolic uh, title. Number three, what imagery can you see here? Imagery. We have tactile, visual, auditory, gustatory, tema, kinesthesia, and so on and so forth. What imagery do you think you can see this point? Just what? Visual image. We can see how man toils in life. You can see the restlessness of what of man in life once it is what outside God. But man can only achieve that rest when he comes back to what to God. Then what are the, oh, the figures of speech used in the in the poem? You can also have uh, in the poem we have dramatic word, dramatic monologue. We have dramatic monologue, yes. We have the speaker relation. It's like a someone is talking. Let us create man and image. We have dramatic monologue being used to what in a in the point. All right. So this brings us to the end of uh, today's class. This e-learning platform was brought to us by Isaac Humanitarian Foundation. I hope to see you soon.